August already, and we are here on Arts for the Health of It. I'm Richard Wilmore. I'm Catherine Partisini. And uh, it's National Coloring Book Day. Who it knew? Is. Yes. And I got this giant coloring book and did this quickly <laughs> behind me before we started because I'm a professional. Yes. Um, spare time. I yes. have one of Michael's Ooh. little coloring sheets behind me. Can you can we see it closer? Yeah. Ooh, hold on. If you're Those listening you... to this, you're she's just yeah. moving. That's I'm all moving. that's happening. On. There's gonna be a lot of silence on today's show with um, Amy, not because she doesn't like to talk, but because we're going to be doing a really fun activity with her um, that <laughs> that Catherine and I know just a little bit about because it's sort of the element of surprise. Oh, it's a little blue dog. That's Michael's coloring sheet from the weekend. <laughs> Does he have a name? He named him Rex. Yes, that's perfect. Yes. So I love that. There you have it. Um, have you ever seen the reverse coloring books? Yes, um, where it's just, I haven't seen them. They're like big blobs of kind of, that kind of look like an image, but you then go in with a pen or a marker and draw the lines that you yeah. want to create. Yeah. Of course they're available on Amazon. So if y'all want to look those up, but yeah, they're like big sheets of like, I guess, watercolors almost. And then your job is to go in and color and see what you, or to draw in the in-between lines and see what you can create out of those, which I think is a really cool activity for those that are maybe afraid and don't think they're an artist and can't paint or do mm -hmm. something. It's an easy way to be creative and um, and not have to work so hard. It kind of takes the pressure off. The pressure, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, can we do our joy card for the week? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, joy cards they were the um the writers and illustrators were on our program a little while ago i'm going to show this joy cards this might have less of a um glare and they're just really fun cards to every day do something creative for your health and you would think that we would have had this done but we didn't so we stole it from them <laughs> And today's number two, because we just started this last week. First of all, here's the photo on the back. And these are all custom made for joy cards. So they didn't and just like yeah. Google if images. You're, if you're listening, this card, it's uh, like an image of a beach scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it brings me back to my cruise. Okay. Day number two. Remember happy memories. Make a list. What mm. memorable moments stand out? How did you feel? What were you doing and who were you with? Make a list and relive these memories with loved ones. So then you go to the book, this little booklet that it comes with. And in here, it kind of describes the health. It literally has health benefits, a page and a half of health benefits of just doing that activity that they want you to do that day. Um, and this recommends making a list of five happy memories today. So, I love that it has to be something you shared with somebody else because I feel like that makes it more impactful. Yeah. More memorable. These are um, available on um, Amazon, of course. We'll put the links in our show notes. They're just really fun. Um, I love that one. And easy things to do every day. It'll take 10 minutes to do this and yes. you'll be changed forever. <laughs> Until next week. Yeah. Yes. Come back <laughs> next week. <laughs> you know that say it again richard you just cut out <laughs> sure. Amer it's american artist appreciation month i did it's not know that i should know that creative month i guess august yes hmm. it's we also my to... birthday month <laughs> your birthday is coming up we have to do something special mm. we'll just have a podcast It'll be fine. <laughs> all right Let's talk. Do you have anything to talk about today before we bring Amy uh, Bernstein well, I'm, out? I'm really excited to talk to Amy. So let's, let's do that. All right. Let's do that. Let's start it. Come along with me and I know you'll see that a song changes everything. Amy Bernstein. Oh, Amy Bernstein. How are you? I am great. I am really happy to be here. This is terrific, This what you do here with Arts for the Health of It. I love it. Well, we're um, happy that you're here 
and we couldn't have the podcast without people like you. So thank you. Um, tell everybody what you do in the world. <laughs> uh, well, what day is it? Is Tuesday? Uh, <laughs> yes. I am. Uh, I am a writer. Um, I spent a long career writing uh, nonfiction. I was a journalist and a speechwriter and other things. But now I am laboring in the land of fiction uh, full time. Um, and it is really an extraordinary adventure and quite an amazing way to, to, get, you know, to get to know yourself better and what you're capable of. Mm. And you, you have a book that came out today. today. Right? It is a book launch day for me. It's a dystopian mystery thriller called The Potrero Complex, mm. which is about a battle scarred journalist who gets roped into trying to solve the mystery of missing teens in a small town. Uh, it takes place um, a few years after a really deadly pandemic, one worse than ours, and uh, society's having a lot of trouble making a full recovery, uh, and is, people are very scarred from those events. So there's a lot going on in this book. There's, it's a mystery, it's a thriller, and uh, it's got, uh, as I'd say, some social commentary in there as well. Out today. Out today, all the places. Places. and all of course, all the <laughs> but, places. So, right, but you know, so yes, of course, it's on Amazon because what isn't? But honestly, um, <laughs> it's also on Bookshop.org, which is a site that supports uh, small indie bookstores, and it can absolutely be bought from Bookshop.org. And um, I, I'm thrilled if people want to go uh, check it out there. And they should. Awesome. Um, how Congratulations! Long did it, yeah. How uh, long did it take you to write the book? I'm always fascinated by that. This was. This one was fast, faster than what you'd consider normal. I went back to find my earliest notes because um, I try to take a lot of notes when I'm when I'm writing a book. And honestly, I started it at the outset of the pandemic, and I, I finished it within um, really I think a matter of of months. And it felt like a really long time, but of course, everything during the pandemic felt like a long time. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I think I just got in the got in the zone and just really pushed on it. Wow. What does it feel like to release a book? Like now that it's out there today, right now, you can't go back and change anything. How does that feel? <laughs> well, that's been, that's been out of my hands for quite some time. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's the second book of mine that that's come out. And what you, what you begin to realize is that, you know, you can push and you can remote, you can try and market and you should do all those things. But you know, at the end of the day, this, every story has to find its readers and readers have to take a chance on authors they don't know or don't know well yet. And you, you try and continue to make those connections with the readers who are out there. And frankly, you, you have to hope for the best. I mean, it, it, it is. It's out of my hands as an author, no question. Yeah. Okay, Oops, I'll go. Sorry. Did you have a question? Sorry, I don't want to, I can't, I can't. Full disclosure, everyone who's watching and listening, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see what Catherine and Amy actually look like. So I wanted to give uh, Catherine time to ask her question. I do, I do have a question. Um, I was curious if you could talk with us about, um, you mentioned in your bio that you do some work with the community um, and that you conduct workshops. And I'm um, just curious if you can share kind of what, what does that look like? Are you working with um, beginners? Um, like some people might be listening and thinking like, I could never write a book that just seems too daunting. And so um, I'm curious what type of people you work with and how you kind of walk them through the process of writing. Um, I do a variety of things, and it's not any one thing. Um, in other words, some people would answer that question by telling you, well, yes, you know, I teach these three workshops in this place all the time. Um, for me, it's a little bit more, uh, I guess, opportunistic. Um, I have put together, um, for writers at all levels, I put together a workshop that I just love doing because it's so interactive called Revealing Character Through Dialogue. And it's to help fiction writers find better ways and to be more aware of what happens when a character speaks in a book and when they shouldn't speak. Mm -hmm. And we go through lots of different examples that work well. And I wrote some examples that work really badly, which were really fun. I love it. I love doing that. I love being in a teaching and training mode in general. I teach grant writing as well. And the reason I love it so much is because I always learn from people who participate in a workshop. It's never a one-way situation. And I love the give and take and the conversations that come out of uh, any kind of good interactive teaching or training experience. 
Um, I've also done work over the years um, with um, high school students writing essays. Um, mm -hmm. There's a James Baldwin um, award program that runs in Baltimore City where I live, where it's just a marvelous opportunity for students to write reflective essays on people who have made an impact on them. And it's wonderful to sit down with high school students and, and really get a window into their writing and their thinking. I also every year um, am a judge for uh, Maryland and National History Day, which is give students an opportunity to um, create a project based on um, uh, a theme in history. And, and it can take many forms. It can be drama. It can be um, a white paper. It can be a video. It can be a website. Incredibly creative and incredibly fun to um, uh, give feedback to students and encouragement um, when they take on really big kind of meaty intellectual uh, projects like that and bring all their creativity to bear. So things of that sort uh, just bring a lot of joy to me. And I, I always get, I think, probably more out of it than, than even than they do. Mm. I know you work, like you just said, you were working with, with children, you work with adults. Do you see a time or an age range where people become less creative and are, or maybe more resistant to being creative? And how do you help um, overcome that? That is such an important question, because I think that one of the things that happens in adulthood in our culture, um, call it Western culture or certainly call it American culture, is that we are shunted into narrower and narrower ways of living that seem to be accessible, ac acceptable. You know, we're told to, you know, get a job, make, make good money, make the most money that you can, go to work every day, um, you know, be responsible, make sure you're investing time in your kids. I mean, all these things, all these rules that are put in place and all these guardrails that we live by. And I think what always loses out then is creative practice. Not always. Some people find a way to strike a balance, but it is so difficult. And we have so deprivileged it, both in our K-12 education, um, arts education, as you know, is, has been vanishing, but also in adulthood. And I do think it is difficult for adults to um, restart the creative lives that came naturally, so naturally to us as children, but it absolutely can be done. Mm. Can we do that today? Because there's a Let's, project today that I would love to do. We're going to do that. We're yeah. going to do that. You're going to be super creative adults. <laughs> what, what do we need for this project? This little this activity that makes me a little nervous because I'm the one that said I don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> right. Well, also you say you don't have your glasses on, which makes me a little worried. So, um, I can put them on for this. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Glad to hear it. So what I'm going to do with you is um, I have um, created two very, very different spontaneous writing prompts. One is basically a sentence of, about a top on a topic that's going to spur your imagination. And the other is I consider a very vivid image that's going to spur your imagination. All you need to do, do is one of you is going to take the writing prompt and one of you is going to take the image prompt. And you're going to write for 10 minutes. And uh, once I show you this material, um, I want to emphasize um, what the ground rules are for this exercise. And then once you've done your writing for 10 minutes, we're gonna come back and you're going to share and we're gonna reflect on your process of creating, of putting yourself into that world for that period of time and how, and how it made you feel. It's not about creating some stellar new piece of art. It's really about the process and the act of creating itself. Ooh. Catherine, are you ready? I'm ready. Which yes. one do you want? Um, I will take the vivid image one. Okay. Then, then Richard's good thing you got your glasses on. Cause you'll have to read the, you have to read the, the topic, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Are we ready for the big reveal? I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Let me get this up here. <clears throat> now, should we do this in complete silence? Should we have some background music playing? What do you want? Um, I think that that's a very individual choice. I personally can't write when there's music on. Okay. Okay. So here's what I have for you. Can you see this? Let's see. Isn't oh, goodness. I mean, I'm just going to do this. Where's my writing prompt? Here we Oh, goodness. 
If you're write listening, about we're, a day. We're, yeah, we're oh, trying sorry. to read. Go ahead. Go ahead, write Richard. About, write about a day when, oh, no, I can't. I feel like I'm at the optometrist. Okay, so, it says, write about a day when peace breaks out all over the world and there is not a single act of violence committed by a human being for 24 hours. Okay. And then, Amy, do you want to speak to the image prompt? The, the image is a painting by um, a, an early 20th century painter, a favor of mine, named Otto Dix. But I don't want to talk about who, who it is because the whole idea is for the images we're looking at... Um, a woman, I'd say, um, over the age of 50, um, rather um, uh, a rather uh, large size in a long uh, sort of uh, dark pink dress with a with a with a brown V-neck color. She's got um, black hair piled on her head, uh, round black frame glasses, and a bit of a crown um, sitting up on top of her her hair, and she's standing up uh, straight for the painting, uh, gazing out at the viewer, and her hand is resting on a small table she's a very imposing very imposing woman mm -hmm. that's, that's a good word for it imposing <laughs> yes right um and and someone who seems almost out of time out of time meaning from almost you know any time um now um here here's here's what i'm going to say to you and this would apply to anyone really embarking on as a spontaneous or semi-spontaneous uh creative endeavor um we adults, we love rules because we live by them. And sometimes we get nervous when there are no rules. But I have to tell you, the rules here are simply to let your imagination fly. So that, for example, you can write in straight prose, you can write in poetry, or you can combine the two in any way that you want. You can be realistic with your imagery or totally fantastical and wild and crazy. You can roam through time if you wish. Um, set set your piece in any era, um, and you can give voice to one or more characters. And a character can be a person, it could be an animal, it can be an object. If you want to do that, so really the only rules are to um, not force yourself to abide by any rules, and try and um, get that to that place inside of you where um, you just start letting the words and the images and the feeling flow right through your pen. And don't edit yourself and don't self-center. Just let it come out and let's see where we wind up. I'd be so curious to hear how listeners or viewers respond to that, to those like ground rules, which aren't really rules, I think, <laughs> as you said, because I probably depending on personality, some people it's very freeing and others it's like, but wait, what are, <laughs> what are the actual rules, you know, so. There has but, to be rules. Right. <laughs> Well, you know, and this is, you know, the, again, this is very much about the journey and the process. And um, I want you to feel comfortable with that. This is not an exercise about spe about specific outcomes, except for you to try and feel some joy sparked in the doing of it. All right. Okay. Are you going to time us? Are you going to tell us when 10 minutes is up? I will be glad to time you. So if we're going to keep uh, sound on, um, we're going to say it's, that we're starting at 225. And so at 235, it's going to be pens down. Okay. So we'll take a break. Catherine and I will start um, writing. And then you're going to come back to complete silence, which is really good on a program like this. Uh, <laughs> but don't turn away. Catherine, do you want background music or should we write in silence? You can pick, Richard. <laughs> Right. Well, Either I, one. We have a new program here and I want to try it. So that's why I want to do it. <laughs> so right, we'll, we'll do still it. take a break. And then when we come back, there will be pretty background music and um, we'll be chatting. I mean, not chatting. We'll be writing. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Whether you consider yourself a musician or not, music is all around us and it affects our everyday lives. Whether it's background music influencing our shopping habits in a store, organ music adding the vibe to a baseball game, or a playlist convincing us to keep going on that last mile of a run. I am Minty Peterson, host of the podcast Enhanced Life with Music, where we take a holistic look at the power of music in our everyday lives through the lens of science and health, sports and entertainment, business and education. You can find me and Enhanced Life with Music at mpetersonmusic.com slash podcast or wherever you get your audio. Unleash the power of music. Medical professionals are burning out at an alarming rate. Burnout can cause health workers to feel hopeless, trapped, helpless, worthless, depressed, 
sleepless, and tired. By joining the Hearts Need Art Gratitude Grams program, medical staff receive a personalized email and video from a musician, an artist, or writer once a week that includes a message of thanks, an encouraging song, uplifting poem, or a simple art activity. After watching their gratitude gram, participants report feeling more hopeful, empowered, energized, and appreciated. If you are or know a healthcare worker that would like to receive free gratitude grams, please visit heartsneedart.org. All right, we're back at Arts for the Health of It. We, it's very quiet in here. I feel like we're in a library. Um, Catherine is writing about this photo that I'm going to put up on screen, I think, there. Um, let me make it full screen. And then I am writing uh, for the writing prompt there to the left. We have 10 minutes and I'm going to give us some music.
Do you need one more minute? I mean, I could keep writing, but <laughs> Catherine? I think we, yeah, same. I, I could keep writing for a while, but. <laughs> well, why don't, we, why don't we have you stop? Even if you're in mid-sentence, it's understood that that's, that's just the nature of the beast here. That was so interesting. Like, it went all over the place for me. <laughs> like, <it> was... <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Is that, that all right with you? Yes. Good. Okay. Because then I can see you. Hopefully. Maybe. Yes, indeed. All right. So now what? Scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting because this is the moment when the sharer thinks, oh, what I did is terrible. It's not finished. I can't share this. And really, you know, making art is always, there's always a raw aspect to it. It always asks us to be vulnerable, vulnerable to ourselves. But what I always say is I always try and say that we agree to create a, sh a, sh a safe space to share this little part of ourselves with the understanding that, you know, we went on this voyage and we really didn't even know what the, what the destination would, would be. And it's okay to share things that you observed on the trip, um, even if you never, you know, got to where you were going ultimately. So we have to be okay with the messiness, with the unfinishedness. Those are hard things for adults because we're, you know, we're, we're, we're told we need to complete to succeed. Um, so with that said, um, I'm not even going to ask for one of you to go first. Richard, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I'm not going to give you an option. Why okay. don't you, um, to, the, to the extent that you can, let's, let's hear what you've got. Now, you have the writing prompt, which was about a day when peace breaks out all over the world for 24 hours and not a single human being commits violence against another human being. Mm -hmm. Let's so, hear how that felt to you. Go ahead. Okay. When I first read it or heard it, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it from like, morning to night like what that day would be like for me and then it turned into all kinds of stuff so i'll just read um there was of course coffee but it tasted completely different richer smoother everything tasted better everything looked brighter i knew something had changed my shoulders didn't sit so close to my ears where was that pit in my stomach can you believe how quick the drive to work was the roads were flowing like a stream and my face already hurts from returning smiles to the other vehicles. I wonder if you, I wonder if you'll hear about this on TV or if it's too good to be newsworthy. I'm just going to enjoy the moment. What do people eat when there's peace on earth? Will I run out of tofu? No, <laughs> my neighbor will surely feed me if I can't feed myself. There should be confetti raining down to celebrate. Do I answer the phone for telemarketers today or do they even exist anymore? <laughs> Everyone's eyes are so shiny and look like little marbles. I wonder how many apologies are being spoken today. And that's when I ran out of time. So look, first of all, thank you. First of all, thank you for being brave enough to, to share that on air with however many other people um, are hearing this. So um, kudos to you for doing that. Um, what's so marvelous is that Let's celebrate the fact that no one on the entire planet could have or would have written exactly what you wrote. So you created something completely unique that just comes out of your own creative DNA. That's what's so incredible about making art any art. It's just, it's really unique to us. So that's fantastic. You know, it's funny, I don't really know you, but I feel now I know you a little better. You have a very wicked sense of humor and <laughs> your sense of humor really comes shining through. And I love the fact that you, you know, you took this sort of over the top monumental idea and you made it, let's just say, quotidian, which is to say it's, it's you know, you still have a daily life to live. You're still going to get in the car and go places. You're still going to drink coffee and eat things. You're still going to you know, be, be in traffic. I love that you grounded this in well, on one level, my life hasn't changed at all, even though peace has broken out any, any, anywhere. And on the other level, nothing's the same. And I don't even know what to do about it. So mm -hmm. you really got to like this big existential moment in the peace, but by focusing on these really tiny moments. And that's 
one of the th wonderful things about making art. And uh, even, even though you may not have consciously set out to do that, that is exactly what you did. And it was just wonderful and funny and um, felt very real. So I really enjoyed it. Well, thanks. It's being released as an ebook on my birthday, August 12th. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine, do you want to share any comments or thoughts about uh, Richard's work? And then he'll do the same for you. Um, I actually, I started, I, I cry a lot, um, but I started crying a little bit listening to you read. Um, I, I think just, I just felt like, I felt like I could put myself in that day that you were describing. Um, so I just, in a way, kind of felt transported, which I wasn't expecting. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't expecting that to happen. Well, you can eat tofu with me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I and I think Catherine, you're getting you're getting at the thing that he did, which is that by staying so re incredibly human and focused on the small moments, we were feeling the big moment. That big moment being this thing that we might dream of or hope could be true, but isn't true. Um, and he just and and that's you know so often what we appreciate in novels that we read is when a writer does that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They're giving you small moments in a life, and yet it's resonating way beyond sort of it's punching above its weight. So right. it's a really cool thing. Hmm. Um, so Richard, my last question to you is, um, what, did it, what did it feel like to just do that sort of free writing, being in the moment? What did the process feel like to you? Was it freeing? Was it scary? Was it both? Was it, did you lose yourself? Um, it, like I said, like I, I wanted, a, cause I'm a planner. So I wanted it to go in a specific way and then it just didn't. So I had to allow myself to just like, whatever was, coming into my head, I tried not to edit it. So I just like put it out there. Um, Cause I thought I only have 10 minutes and I don't have any erasers. So I'm just going to go and anything, any thought that went in my head, I just put down. So it was interesting to see where my thoughts were popping around. Like, I don't know where, I don't know. They were all like favorite things of mine. Like I would want confetti, but I don't know where that came from and why I decided we needed confetti. If there was world peace, like, and of course, I went right to coffee. I wonder how my coffee would taste that day. That was my first thought as soon as I as soon as I heard it was like. So, if you if you had to choose one emotion to sum up how you felt during the writing or immediately after, what would that emotion be? I feel like I just got back from the vacation, kind of from writing about it. Like I feel very like bubbly. Like oh my gosh, that would be such a fun day. <laughs> right. So, so it was, it was, up, it was an uplifting and freeing experience yeah. for you. And, and you mentioned something important, which is that you tried not to self-censor, which when we're, where we're starting an art, a, an art project, it's so important not to censor ourselves and just sort of let the creativity come, come through because there's time to shape things later on. Okay. Catherine, um, you um, were looking at uh, a, a, an art, a, a, a painting by uh, the painter Otto Dix. Um, of a rather um, plus size woman in a dark pink dress with a brown fur v-neck color. Um, she has black hair piled up on top of her head, black um, round uh, glasses and a crown. And she's standing yes. kind of majestically. So let's yes. hear what you came up with. Mine's not as happy as Richard's. <laughs> but here we go. Okay. Um, I can't see. I woke up this morning, swung my feet over the bed and heard a crunch, something cold and hard, but delicate. My new glasses. Cursing the dog, I slumped my shoulders and got out of bed. Without really seeing, I lumped my hair into a pile and pinned it into place. I had things to do today and I didn't have time for this. An elegant brunch with friends, or so we pretended to be. The gold hairpin would have to be placed in where I assumed was the correct spot. Why did we do these silly things, dressing up in theme to sit around eating and talking about the neighbor's hedges. <laughs> Barely dressed, the doorbell <laughs> rang. To avoid tripping over the wretched dog bumping into walls, I grabbed quickly my husband's old spectacles by the bathroom sink and still in my nightgown went to see who would be calling so early. There, a mouthful of roses and deliriously excited was my dog Rex and my neighbor, the one with the perfect hedges. Good morning, Mrs. Huddleston. Found Rex again in my garden, <laughs> scouting for roses. I stared through the blur of an in inadequate prescription. <laughs> it's as far as I got. Wow. Well, well, that went off in an interesting direction. <laughs> um, so, 
Um, tell us about your process. You, you, you were looking at this picture and look, I wish I understood the brain chemistry, you know, when, you know, responding to a written prompt as, a, as opposed to responding to an image prompt, I'm sure it's lighting up different, you know, neurons and synapses. Mm. I just don't know what they are, but um, tell us your, your process about how did the picture make you feel and how did you find your, your jumping off point? She, the first thing I noticed about that image is she just strikes me as really unsatisfied or grumpy about something. Um, and I also, for whatever reason, like zoned in on these glasses that she's wearing, which don't seem to really, they don't seem to be hers like that. So for whatever reason, that was the first thing that came and, and I, I chose to kind of start there. So that's interesting. So you were picking up um, first of all, she does have a very set expression on her face. She's not smiling, that's for sure. So you were responding to her emotional energy, the emotional energy that she was giving off. And then you were also responding to in just your own your own point of view, one one of the one article of, you know, clothing, if you were, if you will, with the mm -hmm. glasses didn't somehow fit her, you didn't think. Um you might like have a, yeah, like I, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to know the story behind this lady, <laughs> like what, what happened to her, you know, right. when she woke up that morning. Well, I love the way you set us off on this sort of very contemporary um, story, which I was almost seeing unfold as the beginning of a TV episode, you know, <laughs> and um, I like the way you. Um, you begin us right where she's waking up and sort of stepping on the glasses, which is what I guessed immediately. I love the fact that you know so many good stories start right at an inciting incident something key happens that's going to drive pieces of the story forward and you just did that mm -hmm. so i thought that was cool um that you just got right into it and i in both for both of you i wish i could see where where it might go you know how this might come come around full circle um i want to ask you Catherine, what i asked richard which was um what was the if you could just assign one emotion to how you felt writing this uh, what would that what would that be I felt curiosity um, because I really didn't know where I was going. I felt like I didn't know where it was going. Um, so I just kept writing to see what would happen. Um, and I, I have a pretty loud like inner critic with, <laughs> with this, this type of activity. So um, I was trying to just, just keep writing through that. Um, so trying to stay like in curiosity instead of judging every line and and that's such an interest, such a good point and i think um staying in curiosity mode which is a bit less uh, a bit far away from the self-critical spectrum and richard for you sort of staying in that sort of joy happy vacation day mode where we're also a little bit far from the the self-criticism end of the spectrum you know let's bring this back to health that's healthy that's healthy for anyone it's healthy for us to be able to change and and modify some of those recurring tapes and thought patterns and put ourselves in that somewhat more joyous space and that space where we're more accepting of ourselves and, you know, being creative um, or making, making art can help us feel that way. It's why I think it's so important that I wish, you know, more of us could, could find time and take time to believe in the, the power of doing that. So I'm really, really appreciate that you were both so game to, to do this <laughs> in real time. That was really fun. It was. And I think it's like, I like to tell our stories were almost exact opposite. You see, like your very first line made my heart like start speeding up. Something about like being in the dark or something. Mm -hmm. And I, and as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. And, <laughs> and then as soon as like the crunch, like I felt the crunch under my feet. And then I thought like the more you went on, I was like, this is, she's such a Debbie Downer. This woman This poor <laughs> character is such uh, and and then I felt bad for her because I thought, well, she has like no peace in her life. Like I was just writing about world peace and there's, like, she's so <laughs> unhappy, uh, mm -hmm. except for Rex. And Rex doesn't even realize how crappy of a life he probably has because she's <laughs> just so unhappy with herself. And then I felt bad for her. Yeah. Right. She, I could, she like, needed feel, some of your coffee. Yeah. Like right, I could feel right? everything you were saying. Like it was so well written, I thought. Right. But I could like feel right. it. Yeah. Thank you. Amy. Well, there we are. We've we have made we have made art. I'm <laughs> I'm so happy. It makes the day even better. We've made art so we can clock out for the day and we can all <laughs> go home now. How can people connect with you um, if if they would like more from you? 
Um, really, the easiest way is to visit my website. It's amywrites.live. It's A-M-Y-W-R-I-T-E-S dot live. Uh, if you sign up for my newsletter, which I promise is only occasional because I just don't write them very often, <laughs> um, you uh, can hear more about my books and things that are going on. And also you can um, uh, get a free gift, literary gift Ooh. as well. Awesome. Yeah, like free stuff. Um, and then tell everybody about the book one more time before we leave. The, the Potrero Complex, a dystopian mystery thriller about missing teens in a small town. It is out today. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Bookshop. It's on BarnesandNoble.com and the places where you'd usually expect to find it. Love it. Congratulations on the book. And thank you for joining us today on your book launch day. Thank you. Thank this you, was Amy. a real treat. Icing on the cake today. I loved it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Make sure you're subscribing wherever you're doing that. We'll uh, see you next week with an all-new episode. Keep creating, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast produced by Hearts Need Art, creative support for patients and caregivers, in partnership with the National Organization for Arts and Health. You can help others learn about the healing power of the arts by subscribing, sharing, and reviewing the podcast wherever you listen or watch. The podcast is hosted by Richard Wilmore, co-hosted by Constanza Rader. Our theme song, Songbird, is written and performed by Natalie Lane. Visit heartsneedart.org to learn how you can support our mission to create joy with people facing life-altering health challenges. Join us next week to learn more ways you can create arts for the health of it. The views expressed on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Heart Scene Art, their staff, board members, or other affiliates. All content is created for informational purposes only. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice or to diagnose and treat any health condition. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professional with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard on this podcast. <laughs>